It may have started with strange bestial dancing, but today Ubisoft thoroughly impressed with this year's E3 showcase. They talked about a lot of different things, and here are just a few. The top five of the most exciting, most interesting, gotta know moments from the Ubisoft showcase. The game Transference is very strange, but we did get to see Frodo himself come out and talk about this narrative-focused VR project. It's a production company that's working in collaboration with Ubisoft Montreal. It's designed to work on VR, but it still works on any sort of screen coming out this fall on pretty much everything. There's a mixture of that live action and VR dissonance, and I'm hoping that maybe this is the key to bring people back to this already dead medium of VR, because it does seem compelling. It is narrative focused, and uh, yeah, this could mean really big things for this entire genre of games. Fox McCloud himself will be featured in Ubisoft's Toronto title, Starlink Battle for Atlas. We got to see a little bit more of what it's offering. It's kind of like a Skylanders with the tactile toys that you actually buy and adjust and change with your ships and a No Man's Sky sort of exploration vibe. But there's still, we got to see in the trailer, a very clear and seemingly very strong narrative pull. Absolutely, it's not geared for people that have been on the earth for this many decades as I, but I, I do think that we've seen the excess, uh, success of Amiibos, we've seen the success of AR games. This could really bring those two together. Ubisoft Toronto, I'm very biased. They're just down the street here, and they are absolutely phenomenal. So it, it's, it's pretty exciting. It made me think that I would actually play this as opposed to Skylanders that kind of just seemed like a cheap money grab. I was one of those players that completely put off the division. I wasn't interested, but seeing how hard Ubisoft has worked to update and learn from their mistakes, the Division 2 looks like it's starting leagues ahead of most of the other uh, massive multiplayer games that, that try to do this. With the Division 2, we're now moving to Washington, D.C. It's more rich, it's more lush, and very interesting, in the Ubisoft press conference, it was entirely focused on Division 2's endgame. So they must have noticed that some people weren't too happy with uh, what they did with the Division. In the Division 2, you can have up to eight players in a raid. There's going to be three free DLC packs that are going to come out uh, sequentially, I think in the year one of the Division. So they're already focusing on what this game will continue to offer. We didn't see that from Anthem. You know, we didn't see that from Fallout or other games that are kind of jumping into that space. It looks like they're already ahead because of all the great work, all the failures really that they had with the division. My most anticipated game of last year, we saw a full cinematic trailer of Beyond Good and Evil 2. Didn't get much of a sense of the game. There was a gameplay trailer a few months ago that, that shed a lot more lights, but we did get to see that the game will be starring a young Jade, who is one of the main characters from the first iteration. She could be the villain, who knows, but she's definitely gonna play a major role in this game. The most exciting thing, though, was when Joseph Gordon-Levitt came on stage and said that me and you and everyone else who works really hard and can barely afford to scrape by will be making the art and the animations for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yes, that's right. His hit record feature apparently allows him to essentially have a, a competition where people all around the world can contribute art and work together. They didn't say how they would actually be compensated for this. Uh, JGL later did give some more information saying they've given out over $3 million to people who are creating art. It's, it is about working together, but also about getting paid. It's unclear if Ubisoft will do that. And it's, it's kind of a shame because it took away from what was a really exciting and really compelling trailer that was focused on like corporate evil. So it just, it kind of blew it on its face a bit, but still Beyond Good and Evil 2 looks sexy as hell. I never thought that my most anticipated RPG of the year 
is an Assassin's Creed game, but it turns out the folks at Ubisoft are working extra, extra hard to make sure that this next iteration is a deep, fully fledged RPG. We got to see ton of it on stage today, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. It's set in the ancient Greek period in between the Peloponnesian War, between the Spartans and the Athens. You can play as two different characters that I believe are the progeny of one Leonidas himself. It looks so sexy, it, it just, it gives you all the stuff that so many other games used to. It, fully fledged characters that have relationships with the world, an action RPG that's in an active battlefield, which I think we've really missed out on. It looked absolutely beautiful. And just a focus on creating a game that is a single experience. It doesn't need to live forever. It doesn't need to be iterative every single year. This is one game that's gonna do one thing really, really well. Could be my most anticipated so far of the showcase. Yeah, what about you guys? Have you had a chance to see anything? What do you think?